Hey guys, it's Mike here. Just wanted to show you a product that I got for doing FPV flight for my RC plane. The product is called a Cyclops Storm OSD. OSD stands for On Screen Display. It puts telemetry information like speed and altitude on the screen to aid in your flight. I'm going to do some narration during this flight and explain what you're seeing on the OSD. With this flight, I'm flying line of sight only, but eventually I will be looking through some video goggles and I will see the FPV or first person view from the perspective of the plane. That's a 9 gram servo that's connected to my rudder channel that tilts the camera up and down. The OSD utilizes an external GPS to determine its position and provide you with the telemetry. I'm testing video quality over distance to get an idea what my range will be. I'd recommend this for anyone trying a new FPV system. Let's get ready for a takeoff. This is a Skywalker version 5 purchased from Hobby King. The motor I'm running is the Turnkey AeroDrive SK3 3536 1200 kV brushless motor. The prop is a 9x7 3 blade master air screw. The battery is a Turnkey 3 cell 5000 milliamp hour LiPo. The ESC is a Hobby King SS series 40 to 50 amp. This thing has more than enough power and usually you don't have to go more than half throttle. To transmit my video, I'm using a Hobby King 5.8 GHz 200 mW video transmitter and receiver, a Hobby King 5.8 GHz circularly polarized antennas on the transmitter and receiver. For video, I'm using a GoPro Hero camera. My video is taken at 720p at 60 frames per second. I've got the camera pointed down most of the time, but if I want, I can use my rudder to tilt the camera up and down. I like the Storm OSD because it includes some great features for FPV. It's got a stabilization mode with heading lock, a return to home mode, and the new 1.1 firmware version has a range limit. We'll talk more about these features during the flight. That's enough background information. Let's talk about what we're seeing on the screen. The OSD comes with different displays. You get this fighter pilot display which has the most information. There's also a display that has less information and a third option which doesn't display anything. You also can switch between English and metric measurements. I'll stick with English since it's what I'm used to. When you start out your flight you hit a special reset button which resets all your counters and sets the home position. You do this right before starting your flight. Let's flash back to the beginning of the flight. Watch what happens when I hit the reset button. I put red boxes around the values that get reset. Now back to the flight. This value is for total distance traveled. I don't know for sure, but I believe this is ground distance traveled. So if you took a dive perpendicular to the ground, this value won't change. This is your heading on a 360 degree compass. The compass shows your direction visually and also provides a heading in degrees. This is the GPS satellite strength. Reception is 0 to 5 bars. This lets you confirm you have optimal reception. You get a remote GPS with this OSD. I mounted mine on top of the fuselage. These are the pitch and roll indicators. Pitch goes negative for a dive and positive for a climb. Roll goes negative for roll left and positive for roll right. This is your ground speed in a scale for a visual. This is your altitude in a scale for a visual. This is measured from your starting altitude when you last hit the reset button. This line points towards home. Notice it's pointing straight up here. I'm located in the front of the red car, right on the edge of the parking lot. Do you see me? This is the ground distance between you and your plane. This is the battery voltage, battery current measured in amps, and the current consumed measured in milliamp hours. There is a current sensor that comes with the OSD that you have to put in line with your battery to use this feature. This battery indicates how much power you've used. It will empty as you use power, and you can configure how much capacity your battery has. This is a variometer. It's used to determine the rate of climb or fall. 
Positive values indicate a climb and negative values indicate a fall. Glider pilots use these to look for thermals that help lift the plane higher. This is the video system voltage. For me, I'm using the same battery for my video system as everything else, so it's the same as the main voltage. This is the flight timer, which starts from the time the OSD was powered on or the reset button was pushed. Note this date and time are not part of the OSD, but on my video recorder on my ground station. Notice my ground distance is approaching 1000 feet and my control and video signal are still excellent here. My goal is 1 mile, which is about 5200 feet. I sure as heck won't be flying over traffic like this to meet that goal. Not shown here is the RSSI voltage. RSSI indicates the signal strength your receiver is picking up from your ground transmitter. My receiver isn't equipped with this, but this is useful in determining if you have sufficient control communication with your aircraft. This PA indicates that stabilization mode is on. I used a switch on my transmitter to turn it on. This mode uses onboard accelerometers and gyroscopes to sense when the plane is unlevel and corrects with ailerons and elevator. Once in stabilization mode, you can also get a heading lock indicated by this icon. This keeps a near constant heading. Also, you can get an altitude lock indicated by this icon. Both of these are useful in keeping a straight flight path. If you try to turn sharply in stabilization mode or if the plane becomes unstable, this icon appears until leveling is restored. The RTH indicates return to home mode is on. Again, you switch it on from your transmitter. This mode sends your plane towards your home position and circles the plane in a counterclockwise direction. You can preset an altitude you want the plane to maintain. This is one awesome feature, which is really helpful in bringing back a lost plane or a plane where you've lost orientation. They have a newer firmware version available that will send your plane home once it reaches a distance limit. How cool is that? Notice you also get latitude and longitude coordinates here. This is useful in recovering an aircraft in an unfamiliar area. Make sure you record your transmitted video so you can retrieve the latest coordinates. Of course, this also assumes you have a good video signal where you can see the coordinates. Overall, I've been quite happy with this flight. I was able to climb to 812 feet and still had good video reception. That's much higher than I will be flying. During the flight, I only noticed small twitches in the video reception that I can definitely tolerate. Okay, time to try this with FPV. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to get reminders for future videos.